Uh, Brent Reed, Aaron Woods, Tony Squires with you. The West Tigers and the Warriors went into the game. Fair bit of pressure uh, on both those coaches. And it was the Warriors who got the job done. I don't think Nathan Brown, who we'll speak to a little bit later in the show, was overly impressed with their performance. But uh, it was enough to put even more pressure on Michael Maguire and his Tigers, Reedy. Mm. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was a pretty ordinary game time, wasn't it? Let's yep. be honest. The standard was pretty low, but... Um, you know, that's 0-3 for the Tigers. Now the next four games are really difficult. Uh, they've got three of them are away from home. They're against good teams, teams that are going well. So, you know, Matt, uh, I saw Madge before kickoff, actually. I've been on 360 this week, and I said, look, if they lose this game, they're 0-3. Yep. You know, then they've got four tough games coming up. They go 0-7. You know, the Madge's position almost becomes untenable. Madge wasn't overly happy with that. I saw him before really? the game. He had a bit of a go at me, and we've got a pretty good relationship, Madge. I've had one over the years. I'm not sure how what, it is now. What do you say to you, Oh, he said that puts a lot of pressure on people saying things like that, that we could go 0-7 and seven and in a certain way. He said, and probably use different terms to that, but he wasn't overly happy and he was even angrier after the game, obviously, after what happened. And, you know, the, the, Did look, you uh, ask a question about 0-7 in the press conference? Well, I didn't go to the press conference no, because when you? I do sideline, I don't scared? go to the... Oh, no. Uh, when I do sideline, I go home. I don't do the press you conference because right I'm not reporting mate. for the paper. So I just go home. But aren't you reporting yeah. for Triple M? No, we don't do. We don't take no. the press conferences. Are, aren't you so just informing yourself for the you know the, your well, whole job? Well, I want to get home and watch the South Roosters okay. game. It was a long way from Campbelltown. <laughs> Campbelltown, the Northern Beaches. Of course, I got home for the last five did minutes. You the toll, for, did you get a toll? It's route? like it, It's like it's like with this place, Tony. You know, yes. he's the last one in and the first one to leave. <laughs> <laughs> he can't wait to get out of the place. Even in the ad breaks, you look at any professional. Mate, you moved to Queensland. What are you talking about? You speak to Woodsy. He's the first one at training, last one to leave, and that's why he's moving on in his career. Who's he played for now, Woodsy? <laughs> I had to ring him on the way here, goes to get him a coffee because I knew he'd be late. Mate, I had to wait downstairs from the coffee shop Stop so he it. could pay for me. What is he in training? Hangs back just to have goal kicking practice, and he knows he's not going to kick a goal. <laughs> just anyway, the back to the well, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, it's really difficult time for them. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the no try, but they had chances to win that game after that. I mean, that was in the first half. Yep. You know, they played against the side with 12 men Dane for the last Laurie 10 minutes. The line. Dane Laurie dropping over the line. They should have won that game. Hey, Rudy, can I ask you this question? Can I ask mm. all the way? Is anyone really surprised after what we've seen over the last couple of years? Is it like we saw round one, they came out and they put a decent performance in against the Melbourne Storm and it was like, okay, so they can play like that and we saw glimpses of that last year. But over the last couple of years consistently, can we say that the Tigers every week, we know what sort of performance we're going to get? So is anyone in real shock now that the Tigers have are 0-3 and... 3 and They've got a tough run over the next couple of weeks. No, I don't think so. I think this is what a lot of people expected, isn't it? That they would struggle. I mean, a lot of people tipped them for the wooden spoon. So, mm. um, no, I don't think anyone's shocked by it. Uh, okay. You know, other than probably, probably Tigers fans who are more disappointed than surprised by it. They've won, what, two of the last 10 games. So there, mm. there is pressure. Obviously, you know, they go 0-3 this season. They've but won, if you th want to go further, Tone, they've won three of their, or two of their last 13, I think. I think they won two of the last 10 last year. They're yeah, right. Okay. So you want to the take Warriors, it back further, it's worse than that. The Warriors will not play worse and win another game this year. <laughs> they will not. I <laughs> mean, Brownie, They'll watching Brownie in the press conference after mm. the game, he was, he was almost despondent of the fact that they got the two points and he didn't know how. I mean, he was, <laughs> he was um, happy with, and, and he said that they defended well and they were courageous in certain areas. But, I mean, um, it, was a, it was a poor quality game and the Tigers had every opportunity just to get that job done and, and couldn't find a way. Yep. All right, before we get to that, that non-use of the bunker for Leilu is what turned out to be a no-try. Woodsy, as somebody who you grew up, Tigerland, uh, so important yep. to you, you know, watching what's going on there, how does it feel? Yeah, it, it does hurt. Tony, like it's, you want to, like, I know I'm not there anymore and I, I did get out of there uh, four or five years ago, but yeah. it's always a club that I watch them play every week and, you know, people always ask me, oh, you must be happy that they're, they're going poor. I said, no, yeah. <laughs> I want to, I've got mates at that club, there's people I know that work there and I want to see them win, I want to see them happy and it's just hard to watch, like it's just frustrating and, you know, last, I just think they've just, they've lost, they, they don't know how to win. Yeah. Like they, they had 12 players on the field, uh, going up against 12 players with 10 minutes to go. My, Marcelo mm. didn't get on the field with one more minute to go. And they're just doing like dummy half. I think they got a penalty and then a, a repeat set. So they had about nine plays in the 10 meter zone of the Warriors attacking mm. the good ball. And I think three or four of them, they had dummy half scoots. And then the other four or five was just simple hit ups. And they just look as like a side that's just a little bit lost. 
Um, that, I thought they were playing okay footy up until the you know the sin bin, and then when they lost Stefano, I can't pronounce his last name. He's he's <laughs> one gun yeah, yeah, he's a gun front row, and yeah. they just lost direction. And I think, and I could I was watching Luke Brooks just because he's been under the pump lately, and he was calling for the ball, but he just wasn't getting it. Yeah. And it's just, he's your main ball distributor. He's your main man. You would need him to get more ball, especially in the 10-meter zone. And you've got nine shots there. And they were just doing hit-up. It looks like they're just doing set-up play for set-up play. They just weren't asking questions. And I don't know if it's that they're scared of playing footy or they're scared of, like, losing. And they just look like, yeah, they're just not happy there. But the when moment. they did down that left side, they, you know, went close to scoring. They did score. And yeah, they opened up. They, there were moments. Like Reedy really said, they had their opportunities, but they yeah. just couldn't ice it. Like... Nine times out of ten, Dane Laurie scores that try. You yep. never see him drop. He's been one of the best players, even in the first half. I think when uh, one of the first try of the Warriors scored, he went up to catch a ball and just dropped it cold. And Pompey scores under the post mm. untouched. It's little things like that, and yep. their confidence just looks shot at the moment. And it looks like they just yeah, just it looks like they just got fear of playing footy. I'll tell you what encapsulates the madness of the West Tigers. They could have had this bloke. Woodsy would have gone back there last year, and instead, yeah, they sign. Jimmy Roberts for another 12 months. They sign Tyrone Peachy. They make Peachy one of five captains. They could have this bloke. In the yep. last 10 minutes, they need a leader out there. They yep. need someone to show them, to show them what to do and where well, to go. The thing I mean, that's hard there, really, they've got, they got five captains. Who do you look to? Well, they could have captain challenged that try, that no try. They could have captain challenged that. Is, 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 is captain thing really that important? I mean, in, in the AFL, they have a leadership group, and then there'll be a game day captain. Can, isn't that just what's going on well, there for, at the time? For me as well, Tony, like, you, I know you've got a leadership group, but why, why name five captains? That's what I don't get. And you're on the field. Who do you look to to, to make the calls? Like, you know, Probably because you can't identify one person that really deserves the job, Woodsy. And, and I think that that's kind of where they're at as a club at the moment. And I spoke about it last week, and, and they're chasing an identity. No one knows... You know, you know, what me, style Gerds, that they me, play, Gerds, what when, they represent. When I was there, Gerds, we were a really good attacking side. And we based it like, what's wrong with going to win a game 20 to 18? You know, mm. why, why can't you outscore teams? What, because people want to be known as defensive sides. Mm. You've got to play to your strengths. And that's the biggest thing. I don't see why they don't do what that. What is their strength, Woodsy? Well, at the moment, I'm how not do you sure. Think that, how do, what, how do, <laughs> they're all just no, low when you go confident. Through, when you have a look at their roster, how do you think they should play? Well, I think they got to, they got to play the ball. They got to play with you know they got to read what's in front of them. Like take the wide four short sides. They got to they got to throw the ball around. But they just look like at the moment, no one wants to stuff up in the team. They just like yep. they just one out, they're one all out under and, pressure, right? Yeah, they're everyone's all feeling under, the pressure. And I, I think as a leader and a coach and whatever or a manager, because these days it's more about management than coaching for the head role. Okay, so um, I, I think it's about making sure that the players don't feel that right. And yep. even if it's there. You need to find ways to make sure that you're getting the best out of your group every weekend and you're providing the right environment from Monday to Friday to get the best out of them. And I know the players are accountable. I understand all of that. But I just wonder whether or not, and, and we haven't, it hasn't been the case over the last couple of years, but what sort of environment's been provided there to get the best out of these guys on a weekly basis? And why aren't they getting the best out of them? And you'd have to say that, that they do look nervous. They look intimidated on the field and they need to change something. Is, it, is that the coach? Well, as I said, I mean, if they go to 0-7, I don't think you've got a choice. And it's always easier. Any coach is going to be under it, pressure 0-7. Well, it's really. easier yeah. to change the coach than it is to change the dress, dress room. We all felt sorry for Madge last, right, last night, right? Everyone I've spoken to felt sorry for Madge because, you know, you don't co coach your uh, – he's a good coach. I think his record shows he's a really good coach. He's won a competition. He's won a comp. He's won comps in England. But it just doesn't seem to be working now. I've been saying for 12 months. You know, he, Luke Brooks hasn't got better under Madge. Like Luke Brooks – either Madge goes or Luke Brooks goes for me. You've got to let one, – one of them's got to go because it's not working. Yeah. Quite like, like, like the look of Jack Madden. I thought he was pretty good yesterday. Mm. Uh, okay, well, look, we're just going to clear up uh, what everybody perceived and thought about this, Joey, uh, the Luciano Leilua non-try with uh, referee Ziggy Stardust not going to the bunker. Let's have <laughs> a listen to what the coach had to say. I really don't understand when you've got that much technology in our game that you can't go back and see it. It's ridiculous, really. That's why we have technology to be able to, to work through those things. And obviously, I'll have to have another look at it. But uh, the Do you big, think it's a try? Well, the ball went backwards. It looked like a try to me. That's a game changer there, right there. You know, it's scoreboard pressure. I mean, the, med the, med the medical people seem to be able to pick up things a lot better than what the... Uh, I've got to be careful how I say this. What you saw there, you know... Last week we had two HIAs, which I get they've got to go through the processes and, and iron them out. You know, once again, technology, you know, in a moment in the game, 
got us. Like it's, you know, we've got people spotting those sorts of different things and they go back to passages in games five or six minutes or whatever it was last week and we get a player taken off, their player stays on, but they can't go and check that. Like, they've got to get them right. You know, they're big things for teams like us that you know, we've got nine sitting on the sideline that could be playing first grade at the moment and we don't jump up and down about you know, those sorts of things because we're committing ourselves that you know, we don't want to look at those sorts of things. But that moment there changes the outcome of where we ended up tonight. Yeah, who knows if it was not indeed a game changer. Certainly Michael Maguire believes that to be the case. And you've got to really understand where he's coming from. What's been the upshot from the uh, NRL on it? Yeah, well, Graham Annesley, the head of football, has acknowledged it should have gone up upstairs to the, to the video bunker to review. He's not saying it shouldn't necessarily have been a try because if it got sent up, given Ziggy thought it was a no try, it would have been sent up as no try. Yep. So it would have required over, uh, conclusive evidence to overturn it. Now, I'm not sure whether there was... Conclusive. The motion made it look a lot yeah. better, Edie. And the other, but the other issue is the Tigers could have challenged well, this, that, that, as I said before. And, you know, this is the discussion about five captains. Now, if you've got five captains, you would have thought that shouldn't slip through the net. Maybe if you've got... But the converse of that is maybe if you've got one captain, they're decisive enough to make that call and look, say, we need to challenge that. You look at Luciano's reaction. He thinks he's got a hand on it straight away. I don't know, yeah. I don't yeah. understand why they wouldn't captain challenge it. Like it's admittedly the refs normally do go either. They go, they, they'll check it. They'll go upstairs and be yeah. a refer, but sometimes they're going to miss things like that. But then that's what the captain's challenge is there for. Yeah. Well, I don't well, the referee and, and both touch judges must have been very confident that it wasn't a try given that uh, Luciano did play for the try, yeah. didn't he? He looked very mm. confident that he got it yeah. down, yet they didn't bother going to it. Can Sorry, the bunker Gertz. not send out a message? Can the bunker, I know that, it, I don't know what the protocols are, but does the referee need to send it up? Can't the bunker in the process of them picking up the ball and getting to the 20 metre line saying that's worth a look and the ref just hold play so well, we get those absolutely. decisions Absolutely, that's what right. they do after but tries. Do you remember last week it happened in the Roosters game? Remember Ash Klein was waiting for about 20 seconds to get a call if the ball went dead, they touched the dead. Why couldn't they do yeah. something like that? Yeah. I just don't understand that one. Yeah. No, I think they could have gone to uh, the bunker. If the bunker had called it, I'm sure they could have had another look. They must have believed that look, the referee was right. But wrong. again, was it conclusive? I don't know that it was. I yeah. didn't think it was a try when I first no. saw it. But the more I watched it, the more I thought, mm, maybe it is. But maybe it's not enough. It's, it's, it, to but overturn got a lot of it, angles in the bunker too. Yeah. yeah. But to overturn it, has got to be conclusive. One triple three five three is the number. If you're a Tigers fan, uh, you want to have a chat and want to think it is time to move on from the coach, uh, give us a call. Love to hear from you. Uh, the Rabbitohs and the Roosters are going to get there. We we'll also speak to Jai Arrow. Nathan Brown uh, joins us as well. Plenty ahead on the Saturday's Scrum. Thanks to King G.